Hello, everyone. I'm Varun. I represent the Keras team here at Google. Some of you might be familiar with our work. We're all about empowering open artificial intelligence and spreading information. Today, I'm here to talk about how you can use Keras for Polygemma. Before that, let's talk about how we got here. The road to Gemini. The last 10 years, Google released things such as TensorFlow, innovated in the form of transformers, and ultimately culminated in the creation of bigger models such as BARD and ultimately Gemini, leading us to Gemma a class of open source models meant to innovate not just within Google, but beyond Google. One of those models is known as Polygemma. It is responsible by design, all about ethically sourcing image data as well as text data, and having accountability for where our information comes from. It's about performance and having the best model in class for its size. And finally, it's about giving you the flexibility that no matter what framework you use, whether it's JAX or PyTorch or Keras, you have options available to you. So what is Polygemma? Polygemma is a single model that takes in both text and image input in order to culminate into a final text output that can solve not only natural language processing tasks that you might expect, but also computer vision tasks. Let's give some examples. For example, you can ask it to take a picture from Nara Park here in Japan and describe the image before it. You can ask it in English with EN or in Japanese with JA, and it will give you the answer you're looking for, a description of the image before it. Or you can ask it a question about what's in the image it sees before it. Here you can see it look at an image of Tokyo and identify not only Mount Fuji, but also the Tokyo Tower. But more interestingly, you can even apply it to computer vision tasks. You can ask a large language model through Polygemma to answer questions about what are the segmentations of an image and where can you find the boundaries between objects. You can also ask it to detect a variety of things all at once, such as a man-made structure and a waterfall. And it will give you bounding boxes just like you would expect of a standard computer vision model. So how does it work? Underneath all of the simplifications, is essentially you have two feed-ins, one in the form of a visual input that goes through a contrastive vision encoder. This is pretty standard techniques from computer vision, especially applied in transformers. You then apply that linear projection to create a linearized sequence of image embeddings. Similarly, you use a standard tokenizer for natural language processing. The concatenated sequence that contains both image and text information is then combined together and fed into the transformer decoder used by Gemma and in some ways also used by Gemini, ultimately giving you a single output of text information that can encode both visual and natural language processing information. Let's talk about how you would use it, as the actual architecture is handled by, for example, Keras. You can feed it a sequence of images in a list or in another form of array, so long as the final form of each of your samples conforms to the standard height by width by RGB channels. Similarly, you can then also load your prompts as standard strings, as long as they conform to the expectations of your tokenizer. When you combine them together, you create a single dictionary that contains an input for both images and prompt data. That is ultimately fed into a preset model. For example, here we can load the Polygemma 3B variant. This final input is then able to answer a variety of tasks. For example, looking at language tasks, you can feed it a describe n. Notice that we have to add a new line. We found in observation that the new line here helps the model to better identify where the prompt ends and the information of the response begins. And then you will find an output based on calling generate. Similarly, with answer, you can use the same format, noticing that we have to append a new line at the end of the entire sequence, not just the answer part. The EN here, once again, represents English, but you could easily substitute this for Japanese or even other languages, including Korean. Visual tasks are a little bit more tricky. When you ask it to solve a visual task, such as detecting a waterfall or segmenting parts of your image, it produces a sequence of coordinates. And these coordinates are maybe not in the format that you expect. You can convert them back to your image's original format by doing a sequence of operations. First of all, using a regular expression in some standard methodology to extract the coordinates from the output string. Then you have to divide the result by 1024. This is the model's resolution under the hood, and it's expected that all of your images are conforming to this, even if you have to resize them. 
So if your images are not 10 by 24, uh, 1024 by 1024, you have to scale them down and then scale them back up to your original image by multiplying by your original image's resolution. This gives you a final bounding box with the top left and bottom right of your bounding box or your segmentations, which you can then visualize on your original image. Fine tuning is also supported, as always with any tool produced by Keras. You can call model.fit by providing a sequence of outputs to match with your inputs, noting that the image input and the text input must be provided in order to produce a fine-tuned variant of your model for specific tasks. Let's recap. Polygemma is a single model meant to consume both visual and textual information and solve problems across the domains to solve both visual computing and natural language processing tasks all at once. For more information, check out the Kaggle for Keras or the Keras GitHub repo, where you can see this model in action, work with Colabs, or otherwise get in touch with the team, including myself. Thank you. <laughs>